What's up YouTube? This is CJ and Sarah. It's a Wednesday and that means it's time for another keto conversation. So let's get started. All right, so this week we're going to talk about living keto as a lifestyle and kind of how we've been able to do it. Uh, we hope that we can share some, I guess, maybe some, some of the keys that we've kind of talked about over the years uh, with how we've been able to sustain keto as a lifestyle. Uh, the conversation kind of came up again because Sarah is approaching your what? Third. Third so keto my keto anniversary. Your third yes. keto anniversary. The end, okay. the end of August, first part of September. Is, okay, three so years. for three yes. years doing keto, and then I'm kind of right behind her. I started in like De December. The end of December. I yeah. started in December. I think it was actually like December 28th or yeah. something like that. So it was that. only like four months. Yeah, yeah. so that's kind of how this conversation. We've, we have this conversation every once in a while, mm -hmm. especially when these anniversaries or keto anniversaries come around. And we just wanted to, I guess the hope is to kind of think about what's helped us be successful and maybe kind of put that out there. So well, I think because a lot of people are, you know, the dogmatic people, you'll read articles that, you know, the ketogenic lifestyle is not sustainable. And yes. so kind of, you know, the difference between a diet and a lifestyle and why we feel it's sustainable and maybe some points as to how we're able to sustain How it is what sustain. this conversation is going to be yeah. about. So hopefully it helps somebody and we're going to get right into it. You know, we've talked about from time to time how come we've been able to do keto, kind of adopt keto as a lifestyle versus it just being another diet. I have tried multiple diets before keto and uh, I would have success and then not be able to sustain it for whatever reason and then you know basically end up back where i was when i started or maybe even worse uh, than before and so you know we've talked about what's the difference with keto what's you know what has made this such a difference and i guess i wanted to talk tonight about maybe some things we've kind of talked about over the years about why we've been able to sustain it and adopt keto as a lifestyle and i guess if you're so you might be somebody that's new to keto you might be just thinking about it and you're thinking oh it's just a great diet a lot of people are losing weight everybody's doing it uh, i'm just going to try it thing. i'm just going to try it and then you know then i'll go back to what i was doing before or whatever but um, and then we both have read all this stuff from nutritionists and experts who say that keto is not sustainable, but here's two people that have been doing it for close to four years and, you know, live it every day. So, um, what do you think are some, maybe some keys to being able to live keto as a lifestyle versus it just being a diet? Just from your perspective. Um, it's really simple. I don't, there's not, there's not a program per se. I mean, as far as, you know, you don't have to keep track of your points necessarily, or um, you don't have to go to meetings or there's not like a, a set program. And for me, that has worked because I, I feel a certain amount of flexibility in this lifestyle. It's very simple to me. It's eat this not that <laughs> okay. so well but now I, I guess when I think about that though there are those of us who track macros right. and uh, you never were much of a tracker but there are people I started tracking and I guess I can speak from from that perspective I didn't find that to be that difficult yeah. I didn't find you know because once and this kind of goes back to it was simple being simple once I figured out okay you know, I want to keep my carb grams, you know, 20 or lower every day. Once I figured out what that really meant. Right. And then figured out what kind of foods, like you said, you eat this and not that. Right. And figured out what those eat this and was keeping your carbs and not that. Low, then then it was then it was pretty straightforward. It yeah. wasn't it wasn't that big of a deal to because one of the things we talk about all the time again is and but back to keeping it simple. Our keto, our eating normally is pretty simple. Well, and the um, food's good. Yeah. I mean, that's another key factor for me is 
the food, the food is, good. is good. I'm not hungry. I'm full. And if I'm not full, I can eat a little more. You know, it's not, well, you've had, you know, X amount of calories today, you're done. That's not necessarily the case. Mm -hmm. With I think that with this lifestyle, it's so satiating that you can even eat less than you did before, but you're not hungry. You're not hungry all the time. So you're not thinking about eating the carpet because you've eaten, you know, a meal that came out of a cardboard box mm -hmm. or, you know, a bunch of fat free things or, you know, things like that. The food on this lifestyle is yummy. It's delicious. It's, you know, things like bacon and butter and cheese and, you know, things that really taste good. So right. it's not a bunch of Frankenstein food, you know, fake food. So I think that's been a big motivating factor for me is that it just tastes good it's real food that you go and you buy at the grocery yeah. store and i think that kind of leads to the next point i had was we didn't feel because of that because of what you just said we didn't feel deprived no we didn't feel like it was we were giving up so much that we couldn't maintain the keto lifestyle you can still go to almost any restaurant and yeah. eat a meal maybe it's not going to be your best meal of the day or it's not as good as maybe something you would make at home but for the most part, you can go almost anywhere and, and find something to eat. And I know there's some of you guys who are saying, well, well, what about bread? You know, what about pasta and that kind of stuff. And I'll tell you that before I even started keto, I had given up bread. And that was, that was when I was counting calories because when I actually looked at how many calories was in a, you know, in a bun, for a hamburger, I was the same way. Or, or I would take off just, one bun, or just, so it was like yeah, just or one. just a slice yeah. of bread when I <laughs> yeah. when I started. So even on my count calorie counting days, I had given up bread because I didn't see the point. I didn't see what the nutritional value of it was. Just it's just a vehicle for all the right. other yummy just, stuff. It's just like, whole, doesn't really have a taste, right? And so, so again for us, we we found it to be simple, found keto to be simple, but then we also found that we didn't feel deprived and the food was good. Cause you had already kind of had, you had already formed like a mental, like withdrawing from certain foods, just yeah. from a, a calorie yeah. restriction. Well, you food. know, but I guess I'll, I'll add to that, although I wasn't having bread, but when I looked at how much a, say a bun was for your standard cheeseburger at say five guys, <laughs> you know, I could have, those same calories this is calorie counting mm -hmm. i'm not doing that now i could have a donut instead of exactly. a piece of like bread. 200 calories and so for it's kind of like for me yeah. it was a no burner okay i'd rather have a donut it or was a, half, a no, or it was I, a no bunner right Forget it. i have a half a donut so yeah. <laughs> we're not saying you need to do that on keto but i guess where we're going is again we didn't feel the product some right. some people approach keto uh with the mindset that of all the things, all they, the can things have. That they can have and all so the things that they're giving up for me i looked at it as all the things i can have i can have full fat dressing on my salads i could have right. butter i could have cream in my coffee these are all foods that i really enjoyed and right. yes you are going to be giving up some things you're going to yeah, be giving up you know you bread are. pasta you know um potatoes i'm from idaho you know, you do make changes. I'm not saying it's going to be a walk in the park, but right. for me, I, I guess I was like the glasses half full in that all the things that I could have that were really yummy that I enjoyed. Okay. So I looked at it that way. Yeah, that's a good point. So we started keto way before we started a YouTube channel. It was sometime after that we started the channel, but we still were making, I think you were making recipes or you were trying things mm -hmm. uh, before we even did anything with YouTube. And then that kind of leads to our next point. So although we didn't feel like we were having to give up things, that's how we kind of approached it. But we also figured out there was ways to substitute some of the things that we maybe we were giving up. So, okay, yeah, we couldn't have a bunch of sugar, but there were natural, natural sweeteners that we could have that basically tasted the same. Right. It may have been a little different, but it tasted the same and was better for us. And so we, again, we kind of learned how to substitute the things from the, our old way of eating for the new way of eating and be and, and able to incorporate that. And that's where a lot of people struggle. A lot of people struggle when they get on keto because, so they have all these things in their head, and they, but they can't figure out how to execute it, and they can't figure out how to execute it long term. 
Right. And so, um, so we were able to, because we were able to keep it simple, we didn't feel deprived, but then we were also able to add some variety into our, right. to you our know, diet. And it might sound like two cross purposes. Oh, we keep it simple, but we add variety. Yeah. And that might seem like those are opposites, but really you're trying new foods. You're right. still keeping it simple, but then you find a new set of simple foods that you enjoy. Right. So and on one hand, you are creating a variety of new foods that maybe you hadn't had before or had in the way that you're having now. Right. But it's still simple. It's still a simple way of eating. And Find a set of foods you enjoy. And I guess let's just face it and call it what it is. Keto is a different way of eating. Right. It is a different way of eating. That you might somebody might say, well, duh. But it is. <laughs> it is. It is. So you can't approach it like say I'm just gonna say Weight Watchers. You can't approach it like that, where Weight Watchers is saying, okay, if you substitute, you know, if you have to track your points and you do these things, you can still have these things. Keto is a different way of eating. You're not going to be able to have all the carbs that you had before. You're not going to be able to have all the sugar that you had before, all the refined and processed stuff. And so once, if you can kind of get that in your head that, yeah, this is different and there is a learning curve, but once you kind of learn the things that you can do and have, then you'll find that there's all kinds of opportunity for you as far as food choices. Well, and, you know, people are always think, well, I'm going to miss X, Y, or Z so bad. I'll just never, I'll never be able to stick with it. But just give yourself some time. You know, yeah. give yourself some time to adjust to a certain way of eating. And that's what's wonderful about the keto diet is that it, it helps manage a lot of your cravings. And so it will help you to reduce your fondness for maybe some of the foods that you used to have right. and it's hard to believe once when, when you're in the midst of cravings and you and you haven't adapted to a lifestyle change yet but really you will get used to liking other foods yeah it, it really does happen it and, honestly does. and you actually do get over craving other foods that you used to enjoy yeah so for example uh, we still we both have kids. We still have kids, and <laughs> we still do. We still, still <laughs> we still take them out to fast food, yeah. and they get fries and whatever else. And you there's know. still a certain amount of certain types of foods yeah, in our and, house at all times. Exactly, but you know I've had a French fry since mm -hmm. I've been on keto from McDonald's, mm -hmm. and you know what? It doesn't You're taste like, like anything. No, nope. it you know <laughs> once, once you stop eating them, they don't taste like anything. I mean, they seriously don't. They don't have any flavor, it's any just taste not to that it exciting. at all. And so I kind of wonder if it's when we, when we were eating them all the time, if it's just the salt and the the fried the chemicals, the, chemicals. the MSG, the yeah, thing, because the preservatives it, make you want it. It, yeah. They've proven that certain types of preservatives and chemicals, food additives in preserved foods like that, make you want more. That's yeah, because how they sell the product. To once you. you stop eating that kind of stuff, you know, and you try it again, you notice the taste is totally different. It's like, what was that? I don't. It tastes like it's just nothing. Not that exciting. <laughs> and so, so again, we add a variety, and that that has helped us. You know. Um, be able to stay, sustain keto as a lifestyle. I mean, we have we have a YouTube channel, so we make new recipes all the time. But I, I want you correct me if I'm wrong. Even if we didn't have this YouTube channel, do you think you would be trying new recipes? Yes. Okay. This, that's I've, the type of person I am. I'm naturally a homemaker kind of person. That is how I am as as an individual. Not everyone is like that. Not everyone enjoys cooking. I yeah, enjoy cooking, that's true. and I always have. That's I, true from the time I was a teenager and my family let me experiment on them with things that I would find in cookbooks that I would find at you know thrift stores and yard sales I've always had the desire to make food make new recipes try recipes out on the people that I love that is just who I am so yes I would still be finding recipes even if we were not looking to still provide content for y'all and I'm trying to think if I was trying to do this alone what I what what I do if I didn't have a YouTube channel and it was just me trying to do keto by myself I know for a fact that I'd be eating a lot of the same foods over and over again but we do that now we do that together yeah, we, we eat course. a lot of the same foods of course all the it's time. easy 
just because it's easy, it's 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 easy, it's convenient, it's fast. Well, and I think and a lot of not, families have that yeah, way of eating. Yeah, we can eating, knock you know? stuff out. But I do know that if 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 I was doing keto without you, I would I would experiment. I would reach out and experiment and try to find ways to sustain it because because for me when I started keto, I had you know health issues. Mm -hmm. And so I don't want to go back to the lifestyle that, that I was living before because I don't. You want, don't want those to come. I don't back. want those those issues mm -hmm. to come back. No. And so I would find a way to uh, sustain the lifestyle, and if that meant me learn, you know, add more variety to my to food, I would do that, even if it was just once a week. Because there's a lot of there's well, a lot of information out you there. You have experimented with recipes even when I'm not here. You've made casseroles yourself before. You've, oh, yeah. You've tried different pancake recipes, so I would imagine that you well, would do that. Well, when we first started the channel, there's... Yeah. Back in the old days, there's... There's Pete, there's CJ... Just, actually, there's, just CJ cooking. There's CJ actually cooking. <laughs> just CJ and I get a lot of crap. kitchen. I get a lot of crap for how the kitchen looked, but... Well, I, I have maybe girled things up. I right get now. a lot of crap for CJ's dirty kitchen. Well, it's torn up right now. But we're remodeling. Whatever. But. It's, it's, but CJ was cooking. And yes. so, um, you know, if you don't believe that, go back to the old, old days of Some our of the channel. the first couple of videos. Because there's videos of me cooking and... You know, it wasn't necessarily pretty, <laughs> so it was what it was. But you know what, I was eating, and I was doing okay. So uh, we think that variety and finding ways to have variety on your keto journey is important. But that also, like Sarah said, it's kind of feels like it's what's the word? Um, An oxymoron. Oxymoron, because <laughs> we also said keep it simple, but variety is important. But variety can be simple because That's true. you find. Sometimes you're just changing your set of simple foods, I guess is what we're talking about. Try new things, right. and then maybe you can change that into a new set of simple foods. So right. it's still simple, but it's also variety because maybe you'll find something that you didn't know you even liked and it becomes your new favorite food, but right. it can still be simple. So Now, I think when I started keto, you had started before I did, but I didn't feel like I had to be perfect uh, and I think some people when they start keto they feel like you feel like you have to do everything perfect and I think sometimes that hinders people but I didn't feel like I mean I felt like okay yeah I need to these are sort of some parameters I need to try to shoot for but I didn't feel a need that I had to be perfect you gave yourself that time to yeah, get used to right it. I didn't feel the pressure to be perfect I didn't feel and to be honest with you I think when I started keto well, I started keto because you had started it. To, to be perfectly honest, well, I, mean, I didn't. Were, I didn't. You were coming to my house, and when we first yeah. started out, I was making you carby side dishes. And yeah. then at one point, you just said, "Just don't do that anymore," because I yeah. was like making you potatoes or but, rice. Or but something when else. I started and keto, I didn't start because I had read a bunch of you know stuff and heard a lot about it. In fact, I had never heard anything about keto before you you started. But then. I said you need to do some reading, yeah. and that's when you yeah. did, and you did, yeah. you know, you did a bunch but, of your own. But I guess, I guess, where I, back to the point, I didn't feel like I had to do it perfectly, and you and I wasn't doing. And it you perfectly. don't have to do keto perfect no. for keto to work. We've yeah. said this before. Some people might not like what like when we say this, but if you can just learn how to get your carbs under control, 20 grams of carbs a day or less. Everything else Indeed, is going to come in time. The other stuff will start falling in place. Mm -hmm. That's really simplified, but that is, if you can figure that out, especially when you first start, you you can do keto and you can have success on keto. Mm -hmm. Because a lot of times was what's making you like you, like you were or are is because of the, the carbs that you're eating and the, the excess carbs. Because we're not saying that all carbs are bad and that you're not going to have any carbs. We're just saying that we eat way too many on right. the standard American diet. We eat, we eat way too much of it, and that's what's causing the problem. Not just because they're carbs, it's because we're eating too many of them. And so, so when we started keto, we didn't feel like we had to be we had to be perfect mm -hmm. in doing it. And I guess we gave ourselves some time to learn and figure out how to do it. You know, Sarah started before I did. Like she said, she. I eventually say, okay, well, you don't need to keep 
make, you don't need to make potatoes make, or rice right, or whatever separate else separate things making. but Poor then meat. i started getting the information myself mm -hmm. i i did you know I, and we we talk about this product well we and i have. think that's a big difference between a diet and a lifestyle is finding out information yeah Keep i started getting, getting the, i started getting the information myself and and it was interesting because I had done a long time ago, I had tried to do Atkins and I had actually had success with Atkins, but I couldn't keep it up. And, it, and I felt, I kind of got caught up in the whole, back when I started trying to during do Atkins, it wasn't really popular. I mean, people were having success, but it was kind of- Hush hush. Yeah, there was a lot of people who were kind of like, oh, you're doing Atkins, that's not healthy, blah, blah, Which is kind of how it is now with keto, Yeah, but, but there's more of us doing it. Yeah, I but think. back then, when I tried to do Atkins a long time ago, I kind of like, I was like, oh, maybe I, maybe they're right. Maybe I shouldn't, <laughs> I, maybe I shouldn't do it. I did the exact same thing because my dad had lost a whole bunch of weight on Atkins back when my son was like two or three years old. Mm -hmm. And the man that I was married to at the time was like, you know, so I got the book and I was all into it, you know, and I like started it for a week and the person that I was with at the time, you know, poo-pooed the idea and I don't think you should do that. And it's a, it's a crazy bad diet, you know, so I never did it. So then I went, you know, another 15 years of my life being overweight when I probably could have managed yeah. better. Yeah, so. I, I could have been the same way. Yeah. And so I guess the whole point behind tonight's talk, it's, this is kind of brief, is that, you know, Keto can be a sustainable lifestyle for you. Uh, you've got to kind of make the choice to do that. Sarah talked about off camera how you know she didn't. You didn't start keto like a, as a diet. You started it to with the idea that you were going to change it, change your lifestyle. Yeah, I mean, I'd seen photographs of myself. You took some photographs of me. I'd seen photographs of myself at like a you know family gathering that because I started at the end of summer, you know, right before fall. And, you know, my mother had just had cancer and was going through everything that she went through. She had used the ketogenic diet and a certain amount of fasting during her cancer, you know, rehabilitation and everything. So I saw what it had done for her and that it helped her in other areas of her life, not just with the cancer, because, you know, I come from an overweight family. We have, a, we have I come from a stocky family, <laughs> you know, that's my stock. So I saw that it had brought benefits to her just in her weight even. So I thought, well, it couldn't hurt. I just will give it a try. Mm -hmm. And I just started. Right. I just started. Right. There was no, you know, I didn't do anything with like a set program or anything. I just started and kept my carbs low. Yeah. And yeah. I did not skimp on the fat. Yeah. And then it just started working and I kept with it. Yeah. So even though it started out as a temporary lifestyle change, maybe in my mind, it became something that I wanted to keep as a habit for a prolonged period of time. And that's why I'm still at it. Hmm. It's yeah. because I like it. Yeah. It's life now. It's not a diet. It's just life. It's just the way I eat now. Yeah. It's just how and I, I eat. And I have to agree. I have to agree that it's just the way I eat, the way we eat now. I mean, I'm going on a tomorrow which will actually be Wednesday uh, I'm gonna go on a, a trip my, me and my daughter and there will be no question in my mind how I will eat even though you will be staying Although with I will people be, who don't yep, it will live be no, that way there'll be no question in my mind that I eat keto every day 24 hours a day 365 days a year no matter who I see where I'm at I figure out how to do it and how yep. to make it work and yep. so that's just us uh, and i guess we wanted to give you some i guess some hope and maybe some reassurance that you know if you're struggling with keto that keto will work for you and you can sustain it it can be it can be doable long term and you can enjoy it uh, it doesn't have to be a struggle you can it can enjoy it and we just want to help you have success with it so that's our keto conversation for this week we hope that it's helped somebody. And if you're new here, we do these keto conversations every week. We do new, new recipes every Sunday. And we do what we eat on keto probably t once or twice a month. We want you to consider subscribing to our channel. Uh, we would love to have you as part of our keto family. And we hope that you have a great rest of the week. And we will talk at you later. Bye-bye. Peace. Peace.